So I recently took a trip to sunny Florida and brought my Nikon D3200 with me. I took a bunch of photos and in this video, I wanna give my thoughts on using this camera, taking it on that trip with me. This was the only photo camera I brought and then I brought a different camera to record videos with. But I took a bunch of photos. I wanna just plaster all those out to you so you can kind of see what type of photos this camera is capable of. Especially being that it's over 10 years old and you can pick it up for right around $200 now, which I think is a fantastic deal. But yeah, this isn't gonna be a review, just more of a casual video. I mostly just want to show you a bunch of photos I took so you can really just see what this is capable of. But of course, I also have some thoughts I want to share about the D3200. Alright, so I got my notes pulled up on my phone here. First things first, I want to talk about the grip on this camera and kind of just the body itself. So this is a really compact DSLR camera, especially for being a DSLR and not a mirrorless camera. You have to fit that mirror in there. And so I'm really surprised they were able to get it this small, especially how short this camera is. So when I grab it here, my pinky's hanging off the camera and I have, I have fairly small hands. My pinky hangs right off. I mean, there's really no way I'm gonna easily fit all my fingers on this grip. However, it is fairly deep, which I think kind of makes up for that fact because I can still really grab this thing good. Even if I have a really front heavy lens, like this lens is fairly heavy. This is the Tamron 24 to 70. Having that super deep grip to grab, even if it's not very tall, is really nice, it's fairly comfortable. Of course, I would prefer it to be a little bit taller, but it does make this camera really good size for travel, for portability and everything like that. So again, as an entry level camera, which is what this was built for originally, I can't complain too much about it being really small and compact, but overall for its size and shape, I think the grip is fantastic. So this camera is over 10 years old. It was released in 2012, but it still has a 24 megapixel sensor. Just as a comparison, the Canon R50 is a camera that was just released by Canon like about a month ago, and that has the exact same 24 megapixel resolution. Now resolution isn't everything, and of course a newer sensor is gonna have better technology and it will be better, of course. You know, of course you have to expect any new camera to outperform a over 10 year old camera, but that doesn't mean the 24 megapixels on this camera still don't perform very well because they do. You can crop in on the images quite a bit and still have good resolution. And I think a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor out of a $200 camera is really an awesome value and it gives you really high resolution photos. Next up, this is something that a lot of Nikon cameras have, but it's not very common in other camera brands, especially in entry level, more budget cameras. And so that is, the SD card slot being on the side. So in a lot of other entry level cameras, it's gonna be on the bottom where the battery is. So every time you wanna swap your SD card out, you have to open the slot up, which will shut the camera down because you're kind of opening the battery slot up. And also sometimes your tripod plate will be blocking that so you can't remove your SD card unless you take you know, the tripod plate off and then turn the camera off to open the battery door slot. But it's really interesting to see that Nikon put their SD card on the side, even on their entry level cameras, when that's mostly reserved for higher end cameras just because of that quick swapping capability of it. Next up, I kind of brought this up already, but the price of this camera is really fantastic for what you get. Being at right around $200, the autofocus is pretty decent. You know, there's not that many autofocus points like in most other DSLRs. It records 1080p video. The video autofocus isn't very good and the video quality isn't the best, but it still has 1080p video with a microphone input, which again, at $200 price point, having video with a mic input is pretty great, honestly. It also has a built-in flash, which I can pop up right there. It has a hot shoe on the top, you know, a decent amount of dials and buttons to get you by. And overall, this provides a great value and fantastic performance for $200. So I'm sure at this point you've seen a bunch of photos. That's pretty much all I want to talk about in this video. I mean, this is really a fantastic camera. I think if you're around this $200 price point and you want to get into photography with a Nikon camera, this is a fantastic option. I think for video, it's hard to get good video at this budget. You know, I think if you do wanna get into videography or content creation, something like that, you're probably gonna to wanna to step up a little bit and maybe save up a little bit more and get something like a used Canon M50. If you're open to Canon cameras, of course, that camera can be found for around 300 to $400 right now. And it's a lot better for video and for content creation. But for strictly photography, I've really been loving the photos I've been getting out of the D3200. But either way, that wraps this video up. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos about the D3200, I'll link some other ones I have down in the description. But also consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.